the wealth of nations depends on the health of families. February 6, 2013, by Patrick Fagan, in Public Discourse, the Journal of the With Witherspoon Institute. Family, church, and school are the three basic people-forming institutions, and it is no wonder that they produce the best results, including economic and political ones, when they cooperate. Even if all the market reform, reforms of the Washington think tanks, the Wall Street Journal and Forbes magazine were enacted, we still need to kiss the great American economy goodbye. Below the level of economic policy lies a society that is producing fewer people capable of hard work, especially married men with children. As the retreat from marriage continues apace, there are fewer and fewer of these men resulted in a slowly, permanently decelerating economy. When men get married, their sense of responsibility and drive to provide gives them the incentive to work much harder. This translates into an average 27% increase in their productivity and income. With the retreat from marriage, instead of this marriage premium, we get more single men who work the least more cohabitating men who work less than married men and more diverse men who fall between singles and cohabitators. All this is visible in the changing work patterns of our country, resulted in real macroeconomic consequences. 50 years ago, family life and the economy were quite different. Around 1960, just prior to the sexual revolution, the United States was the world's heavyweight champion in economic product productivity and earnings. Today we still lift a lot, but to extend the metaphor, we are moving down to the middleweight class. My colleague, Dr. Henry Podrykis, has shown that divorce alone has reduced the annual growth rate of the economy by at least one sixth since the mid 1980s which with its compounding effect is by now quite significant no matter which way you look at it through the lens of income savings or poverty marriage is the great engine of the economy with every household a building block that either contributes or take away millions of times over Put all these families together, and we have the team that runs the American economy. What national data shows about marriage, children, and the economy? A productive household does not simply happen when parents beget a child. The foundation for a productive household begins with marriage. Other arrangements cannot measure up, not for the child, not for the couple, not for society, and certainly not for the economy. Cohibition does not take place of marriage. Cohibition does not take the place of marriage. And there are very strong indications that cohibition may rival single parenthood as the largest generation generator of po poverty, while divorce is the cause of most women and children entering poverty in any given year. If marriage makes the world and economy go round, these newer family structures truncate productivity and society begins to limp along within a married household children are like tender young plants that thrive on the unity and love of their father and mother but wealth when they fight or bicker and tragically the budding capacities of children are further weakened when their parents reject each other either through divorce or separation or simply walking away from each other as in single parenthood for American children, the situation is dire. More than half of our 17-year-olds, about 54%, have such parental rejection in their history, psyche, and heart. Only 40%, only 46% of American teenagers at age 17 have lived their whole life in an intact married family. Among African Americans, only 17% come from families with always intact married partners. By comparison, 90% of African-American families were intact when Pearl Harbor was attacked in 1941. 
Where marriage is concerned, Asian Americans are our strongest ethnic group. Only 38% of Asian cho American children grew up without married parents, and yet they are now in much the same marriage situation that African Americans were in two generations ago. When Daniel Patrick Moynihan caused an uproar in 1965 with his prescient work, The Negro Family, The Case for National Action. To situate the Asian American family in the history of the retreat from marriage, America's strongest ethnic family group is as strong now as our present weakest ethnic family group was in the 1960s. Love, not rejection, gives strength to a child in a child's family. For children whose parents have always been married, life is quantitatively better. They have higher GPAs, greater educational attainment, longer and happier lives, and a better chance at marriage. Rejection between parents weakens children's children, slows them down, and lowers their potential. Though the extent to which children are affected varies from child to child. As a demographic, they get lower grades, receive less education, have poor mental health, are less employed, are less likely to be happily married, and will live shorter lives. Even without knowing the family history of employees, employers know the difference between a hardworking, honest, cheerful young employee and one who lacks these qualities and choose accordingly. Human resource departments are well aware of the difference between the work ethics of single young men and married men with children. They see the different rate of absenteeism, especially before or after weekends, who is on time to work and who is accident prone. Stockbrokers and life insurance salesmen know where strengths lie too. Their biggest market are married couples, though Wall Street has yet to figure out the macroeconomic implications. Adding all this together, the conclusion visible in the federal data is that married families with children are the main source of the higher income, education, and productivity that grows the economy in its capital. Interestingly, and today controversially, chastity, sexual abstinence until marriage and lifelong monogamy thereafter, significantly strengthens marriages and therefore the economy. Research on the pathways to divorce show this. Heri Heritage Foundation research has shown the relationship between the number of multiple sexual partners and the probability of seeking divorce. Always monogamous women have much more stable marriages. For women ages 30 to 44, one non-marital sexual partner usually before marriage correlates with a huge drop in likelihood of staying married. From 40% from 80% for the monogamous woman down to 54% for the one extra partner woman. Two sexual partners other than the husband and again most frequently before marriage is correlated with a further drop in stability, giving the woman's marriage a 44% chance of lasting stability. In other words, by a woman's early 40s, two sexual partners before marriage is correlated with more than a 50% chance of divorce. Coincidentally, that figure, 44%, is close to the present rate of children in intact married families. And the current average number of sexual partners for unmarried women in their early 20s is two. A generation of unchaste 20-year-olds today may be looking at a 44% chance of stable marriage in the future, or even less, should they choose to remain on their present course. Who would ever have thought that chastity is tied to the growth rate of the American economy? Each new sexual partner in the teens and 20s prior to marriage notches down the economy in the long run microscopically at first but multiply tens of millions of time it adds up to serious money over time besides marriage the other foundational institution that fosters human flourishing is religion the effects of religious worship are dramatically visible in u.s national survey correlational studies and increasingly in causational studies in areas like education crime reduction, and health. Religious practice and prayer are good for marriage, but when marriage and worship are combined in family life, children thrive even more, and a decade or two later, the economy experiences the benefits when those children are more productive earners. 
When marriage and worship are united with a school that upholds the same fundamental, f fundamental ideals, a small community is formed, eminently capable of raising children to their optimum capacities. Family, church, and school are the three basic people-forming institution, institutions, and it is no wonder that they produce the best results when they cooperate. Unsurprisingly, we see these results in the national data. Homeschool children thrive the most and they come overwhelmingly from intact married religious families. Children in private religious schools come next and children in public schools after them. Thus, the core strategy for forming great workers for the economy is growing intact married families who are united in worship through their community of belief and send their children to schools that inoculate those values and beliefs. Not only does that produce the, the greatest average human capacity for the marketplace, it also produces the best citizens for the polis and the common good. And from this strong family, other benefits abound, marriage, education, health, income, savings, longevity, and a society sh shielded from the many costs and sufferings of crime, addiction, sexual perversions, bad health, poverty, and abuse. While strong families will not fully obliterate all societal weaknesses, they massively reduce them. Teaching, Worship, and Work, How Intact Families Preserve Societies If all three of society's people-forming institutions fail to deliver, and they are failing more and more, and the two instrumental institutions that build societies, the marketplace provides for material needs and the government, which preserves order and peace, will also deliver less and less, and the delivery will be all the harder because workers will have increasingly less capacity. The intact married family is where the task of these institutions are first learned, which ensures that these institutions are maintained by the rising generation. The child learns about the marketplace when he first sees his parent taking care of the family's material needs, earning saving and investing in the home and the children's education as the child grows he starts giving his own contribution to these material needs through his own earnings savings and chores he learns about government by seeing his parents cooperate closely to foster peace and order in the family exercising the self-control needed for a united governing body but when parents divorce children no longer learn these lessons Working for the common good no longer exists for mother and father as a couple. And the family marketplace, income and capital, suffers very significantly, frequently pushing them into poverty. Children's experience of marriage and family is clouded by major negative experiences and feelings, which lessen their prospects of a future happy marriage and family life. They are less inclined to stay in school and their religion their religious worships decrease or ceases. <clears throat> Let me pause for a second because that was that was a powerful ass paragraph right there. And that actually makes a lot of sense in terms of the difficulties that children or, or adults, I should say, that were raised in single parent households right it actually explains and gives an explanation a causality for why <clears throat> children who come from single parent households have such difficulty with their relationships in general but specifically marriages is because how they broke down how children's how children don't learn the lessons of working for the common good by seeing their father and mother as a couple doing that. And so it, it makes it more difficult. But let me let me get back to, to reading this. I just wanted to, to pause and, and, and to and to point that out and highlight that real quick. Okay. So back back to the, the article. <clears throat> These five tasks are institutions, family, church, school, marketplace, and government are fully reflected and reinforced by the flourishing married family. 
They are fundamental, interconnected, and irreplaceable. Anyone that is weak necessarily weakens all the others, and none of them can compensate for the failing of one of the others. History is littered with stories writ large of the damage caused when one institution tries to displace or take on the task of another, most especially when government and religion try to do each other's work. Though government often tries to take unto itself the work and the prerogatives of some of the other institutions through the use of force embodied in laws, it cannot fulfill a purpose for which it does not have the capacity. Its fundamental its fundamental capacity is force, its role is justice, and its object is peace. The work of a growing society is much like the work of a farmer growing his crops. There are seasons and cycles, a time to sow, a time to grow, and a time to reap. He needs good seed or else his crop yields are meager. He must also pay attention to the seasons and plan his work accordingly, for he has no control over them. Society has analogous seeds, seasons, and crops. A time to sow. Marriages soon are after entering the marketplace. A time to grow in good soil. Children in a married, worshiping family. And a time to reap the celebration of young adulthood, well attained and poised to repeat the cycle. <clears throat> Thus, the people forming institutions move through their generational cycles every 25 to 30 years or so while the younger generation replacing those who are aging and dying. All while the two instrumental institutions are kept humming if they are supplied with productive workers for the marketplace and good citizens for the work of the commons. Conclusion the intact married family with children is the household that generates the productive work, income, and savings that purchases houses, food, cars, and clothing, use energy, send children to school, and save for college and weddings. It is up to homes like this that the Nobel Laureate economist Gary Becker spoke when he said that, quote, the mother at home raising their children contributes more to the economy than her husband out of the workforce end quote if we want a vibrant economy we must grow the best of children just as the farmer who wants the best crop crops pay close attention to the time of the season and sows the best seed and the best soil he can much like the farmer who neglects the basics the people of Spain, Italy, and Greece have given up on traditional family life as the core of their culture and their future and have vied with each other over the last de few decades for the lowest fertility rate in the world. The finance ministers of the European Union and the world do not appear to have caught on to the economy-altering implications of this change while we in the United States are well on our way to becoming a Spain, Italy, or Greece writ large unless we again learn the fundamental law of the seasons of society's regeneration and the absolute necessity of the timely emergence of the young, intact, married family with children that worship God weekly. Okay, guys, so this is an article from Public Discourse, the journal of Witherspoon Institute. Um, it's pretty much a, a non-profit out in New Jersey that does a lot of research and writes a, a lot on topics that deals with, you know, the moral foundation of free societies and a, a bunch of a, a different economic, uh, a, a bunch of different academic disciplines, excuse me, okay, um, and so that, that was a really good article that broke down the importance of family and the, the importance of, you know, the importance of chastity in terms of young men and, and women in terms of how bachelors and bachelorettes are, are single people pretty much take more away from society than they contribute and how family is essentially the foundation of any good nation. Right. And so I'm going to actually talk about more, more in my next video about, 
you know, the dangers of bachelors and bachelorettes, which is essentially a product of Western society. Um, but this this article does a really good job in showing you how those particular aspects or are particular archetypes within in Western society actually helps to decay the society and helps to decrease the society's productivity and actually decreases the society the, the society's fertility right um so i hope i hope you guys enjoyed the reading of this particular article i thought it was very fascinating how they broke these things down uh with, with different uh research and I, I actually had a link for the article so you can actually a lot of the research that they mentioned in the article uh they actually have links to the sources that you can go if you want to follow up on those and look at the particular uh studies and what have you but you know that's that's it for this one guys um i hope you enjoyed the reading i hope you enjoyed the article peace